This or similar accidents can also occur on your MRI system if you fail to observe the safety regulations. With our products of the Magnetom family, we put patient and staff safety first. This video provides medical personnel with an overview of the basic safety precautions to be observed when using a magnetic resonance imaging system. You will be introduced to different magnets and learn how various magnetic fields affect people. Examples will show you the strength of a static magnetic field and the dangers faced when handling magnetic objects in the examination room. This video also addresses proper patient preparation and examination, as well as how to correctly handle the surface coils. Finally, we will show examples of emergencies or accidents and how to avoid them or react appropriately to them. Please be aware that this video does not claim to be complete and by no means replaces the system manual or operating instructions. Magnetic resonance imaging, abbreviated as MRI, is a diagnostic method for generating cross-sectional images of the human body. This method is based on the interaction between the human body and externally generated magnetic fields. In contrast to computer tomography, magnetic resonance imaging does not use ionizing X-rays, but uses static as well as slowly and quickly varying magnetic fields. Physical principles. The patient is positioned in a powerful, homogeneous, constant magnetic field generated here by a cylindrical magnet. The strength of the magnetic field is indicated in units of Tesla and today typically ranges between 0.2 and 3 Tesla. In comparison, the Earth's magnetic field is approximately 0.00005 Tesla. The static main magnetic field of a 1.5 Tesla magnet is approximately 30,000 times stronger than the Earth's magnetic field. The MRI is based on the magnetic properties of the most prevalent atomic nucleus in the human body, the hydrogen atomic nucleus, which is found in tissue and blood. The hydrogen atomic nuclei in the body's water and fat molecules align themselves to this main magnetic field. The alignment of the atomic nuclei is then systematically disrupted by an alternating magnetic field of suitable frequency. For a magnetic field of 1.5 Tesla, the frequency required to affect the hydrogen atomic nuclei is about 63 megahertz, which is in the frequency range of radio waves. A transmitting coil in the magnet generates the alternating magnetic field in the area under examination. After being excited by high frequency energy, the atomic nuclei return to the equilibrium position parallel to the static main magnetic field. The atomic nuclei then emit electromagnetic waves in the frequency range at which they were excited. Receiver coils arranged around the patient detect these weak RF signals. During excitation and while the nuclei are returning to the steady state, spatially varying magnetic fields, known as gradient fields, are switched on so that the resonance frequency of the nuclei varies from one region of the patient to the next. This is how the spatial distribution of the atomic nuclei in the patient is coded into MR signals. A computer program analyzes the MR signals and generates an image of the distribution of the hydrogen atomic nuclei in the human body. The MR unit is housed in an RF enclosure. This ensures that the very weak signals from the RF pulses are not contaminated with interference and cannot cause radio interference themselves outside the enclosure. Therefore, the patient is exposed to three different magnetic fields during the MR examination. The static main magnetic field that aligns the atomic nuclei, the high frequency alternating field that disrupts the alignment, and the pulsed gradient field that enables correlation of the MR signals to the location of origination. All three fields affect the patient differently. The static magnetic field used in MR does not cause any lasting side effects. The same is true for alternating fields when used properly.
The rapidly switched magnetic field gradients in combination with the static main magnetic field are the cause of the considerable acoustic noise created during an MR examination. Since the coils generating the gradient field are located in the static magnetic field, a sudden force is exerted on them when the current is switched on or off. The resulting noise is similar to that of a loudspeaker in which a coil in the field of a permanent magnet causes a membrane to move. The noise increases with the strength of the static magnetic field and the gradient fields. The noise level of certain MR systems may require patients to wear hearing protection. In rare cases, quickly switching on and off the magnetic gradient fields can induce electric voltages in the peripheral nerves. These harmless voltages are expressed as a tingling sensation or mild muscular twitching. However, our MR systems are equipped with safety devices for controlling the switching speed and strength of the gradients to prevent nerve stimulation. The high frequency alternating fields used for stimulating the magnetic resonance in magnetic resonance imaging are absorbed by the body and cause the irradiated body region to warm up slightly. For safety reasons, control circuits in the MR imager prevent the energy absorbed by the body, SAR, from exceeding a predetermined limit. Since the computation of SAR involves the patient's weight, it is important to enter this information correctly during registration. The limit values are fixed by international safety standards. Now, let's take a look at the heart of the MR system, the magnets. There are three types, permanent magnets, resistive magnets, and superconducting electromagnets. Permanent magnets always have a magnetic field. In case of an emergency, a permanent magnet cannot be switched off. They do not require an external energy supply and can only reach limited field strengths. In resistive magnets, the field is generated by a constant external current supply. The current flows through the wire coils and generates a large amount of heat in addition to the magnetic field. This heat is drawn off by a water cooling system. Resistive magnets only generate low field strengths since they are limited by the ability of the cooling water to dissipate heat. In case of an emergency, a resistive magnet can be switched off at any time. Superconducting magnets are used to generate higher magnetic field strengths. In this case, the wire coils through which the current flows are cooled by liquid helium to 4 Kelvin above absolute zero, which is minus 269 degrees Celsius. The current is provided by a power supply unit during installation. But once superconducting, it can flow without an external power supply for several decades. Once cold, the current flows continuously through the circuit and generates the static magnetic field. In case of an emergency, a superconductive electromagnet can be switched off at any time. For MR, the magnets are largely shielded so that their fields only act inwardly on the patient and quickly fade in an outward direction. This differs for various systems and depends on the field strength and design of the magnet. The use of magnetizable objects in the area of the fringe field is strictly prohibited since the MR system exerts an attractive force on them. The 0.5 millitesla fringe field line is extremely important. A control area for the field strength in question is established around the magnet. The control area must be clearly marked and must adhere to the particular safety measures. Measured in the direction of the patient axis, the 0.5 millitesla line of this 0.2 tesla system is 1.9 meters from the magnet center. In the case of a 1.5 tesla system, it is 4 meters from the magnet center.